as well. So yeah, not as busy as, as usual, but you know, it's been a good week. Good, good. Well, that's good. I wanted to bring you on specifically to go over GBP CAD. Are you ready to do that with me? Can I share my screen and we go over some of these markups? For sure. Cool. Let me <clears> flip <throat> this over here. Perfect. Cool. So I've got your markups that you sent me pulled up. Do you want me to start here? Should I start on, let me start on my chart really quick, just so I can kind of give everybody yeah. a clean chart to look at. Let's erase this. Yeah, I'm, the I'm visiting home, so I'm on my laptop. So no, it's all good, it's not bro. As, uh, not my usual desk. <laughs> He's the traveling trader. No, bro, it's all good. Yep, yep. <laughs> um, so basically, tell me if I'm wrong here. But what, I mean, you were not wrong on your direction. Clearly, this look, moved higher today. Clearly, you had the right bias. That bias started with the market sentiment line. Yeah? Correct. Yep. You know, you can't ignore that perfect L50. Not at all. EMAs are still pretty good. 200 EMA is under the 800 EMA. So that could be a little bit better, but they still look pretty good. Yep. And you're looking to buy it this morning right at about here. Correct. Right off the 50 EMA as this thing yep. starts to shift yep. up. Right. Yep. Any one yep. minute oh, divergence, any D1 action going uh, on in here? There, there was a little bit of uh, divergence that was building, but then it got broken pretty quickly. So there was no actual D1 in there in, uh, that was uh, that was forming that. But, you know, sometimes we don't get the D1. We just get the A1, A1 shift candle in the upshift. Now, I think where people were beefing this morning and where they were a little bit confused, yeah. I saw some. That's why I wanted to bring you on and talk about it because they were talking in the chat. They saw this shift yeah. candle with the 8 and 21 EMAs crossing. And they were like, okay, that looks good. But they said that the RSI was not through the L50. So how did you justify the entry? What were your thoughts? So so my my entry, uh, at the time of entry, it was slightly through. The RSI was slightly higher. Because the next candle wasn't bullish, it looks like the RSI wasn't through. But at the time of entry, I had it as being just slightly, you know, the RSI value was slightly higher than the L50 and the trend line. Got so it. so me, it's still it was, A1. It was good. It's still, that was an A1 shift candle. Yep, for me, the RSI was, value was higher than the L50. So that so was me, my first entry on GCAD. Yep, yep. Let me ask you a few more questions before we go to the second entry. With you seeing this action earlier in the day, like this big push out of the Asian range and then the big pull back, does that make you think that it has the potential to go higher today? Does that excite you? Does that scare you? Because some people would get scared by that. How do you feel about that? Sure. I, I think that always, you know, with the, with the ASFX systems is that we always get that big initial push out the Asian range. And that was induced to two pound news this morning, CPI news, if I'm not mistaken, that was positive for the pound. So, and obviously the technicals line up, it was, it's also very, very uh, bullish with the um, EMAs coming to full uptrend as well as the L50 telling us to buy today. And so what you normally do is we get that push out, the initial push out the Asian range uh, comes back inside and then we get our second entries that normally kind of can go for the, for the day. And as, uh, that's what happened yet today as well yep okay so it doesn't scare you as much now how about the no, divergence no, that's actually what we look for right how about the divergence here on top what are your thoughts on this C correct so i had the trade graded as a c setup divergence on top in the way of our trade as well as that ema the 200 being slightly below the 800 so not in full full uptrend so c setup for me you know two knocks we grade a c setup i love it i would have done the same thing how did you manage this trade how did you get out of it what did you do to, to cut this loss Sure. So I was in pretty small at about like 0.5% um, of, 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 of a position size of my total account size. Um, and the first, the, when it came back, it, it looked like I wanted to go. The first candle and came back down, just pinned it. I didn't take any off because it was like kind of like a pin pinning the EMAs, giving us a sign that when the one minute looked pretty steady, looking for good for to rise. But as it came back down on the next candle through the, through as soon as it came back down hard through the 21, I pulled my, um, my, my position for about a 0.3% loss as it was coming down. I closed it just towards the end of the, of the candle, um, about like 30 seconds left because I knew, okay, cool. It's kind of beat, you know, um, and had my stop slightly lower, just, just below, um, my, uh, those pins of the, of the entry candle, just to give myself a little bit of extra space. Cause it was quite choppy after that news. Right. Yeah. Um, so that was my, how I managed that first trade. So I ended up with about a 0.3% loss or so, I, something like I that. I love that you pulled it early, bro. I think that that's great. And I do the same thing like today with the GCHF, when the GCHF started to come down a little bit, I'm like, if this just picks up more momentum, I'm getting out of this. Like, I don't want to hold on to it. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I yeah, feel like, bro, exactly. we've been getting really good at pulling our trades quickly. I feel like that is a huge thing that we both have been working on and getting a lot better at over the last year or two so good yeah. first entry 0.3 percent small loss take that next thing you erase this you're like okay i'm going to stay focused on this because the bias is still there now it comes back up off Correct. the 50 here and looks like it wants to continue higher so where was the second entry was yep. it 
as this starts to come up here? So it was, yep, at, on that candle there, I went to the one minute and um, I'm, not, I'm not too sure exactly South African time, but I got a, a nice retest on the one minute. So this is where um, a lot of the ASFX members and I just, I think the, the second entry is the entry that we kind of have to re, uh, go more in depth on because the first entry is pretty simple. It was an A1 shift candle to me when I was watching it, the RSI was good. So the TDI was proper. Yep. Uh, RSI was in proper position. So it's a simple A1. I think the second entry is a little bit more advanced. And it's kind of, if you've been watching me trade within the group chats uh, and in one on live stream the last five months, since kind of just before that A1, uh, the D1 deep dive, I've been using the shift a lot and looking for one minute entries with the shift in our favor. So it's basically not really, it, it's still using the ASFX systems. It's not, I'm not making up my own way to trade or bringing in some other new indicator or anything. I'm, it's literally just using that 50 minute shift as a bias dictator for, to go along with that L50. L50 is telling us to buy, cool, I'm gonna wait for that 50 minute upshift, which it holds the 50 minute upshift. And that's where, when it's holding that shift that we wanting to be trading uh, in the direction which trading in i'm looking for one minute entries and during that that next as you know it kind of looks like a three candle formation whatever it's but it wasn't a, obviously it's not a three candle formation it just wants to hold that up shift over there i got in on the one minute with a nice clean 50 ema retest on the one minute right here probably right where it comes down through the 50 back up through where i have this that's big circle one. yep that's that's exactly it so let me erase the circle i'm going to sync up the vertical line so everybody can see it right there right so we, sure. entry second entry comes in there somewhere around 168.78. Where do you put the stop loss under this lower high right here or uh, higher I low? Put a, yep, I, I, I gave it a, that a, a little bit lower just for that, yep, like it was about 10, 10 and a half pips or so. Uh, just that initial initial um, stop uh, at, the, at the low there on the one minute. Now, just I, because I knew, okay, cool. Good. Yeah, no, just uh, just to give it a little bit of breathing room up towards the divergence. Yes, it's only about one and a half or 1.3 R to the div structure. That was the problem. That was the problem. So you still size down for that yeah. and still take that second trade. Correct. Got it. Correct. I like so this, I bro. That, I, I understand what you're five. saying. I feel like other people will see this now after hearing the explanation and they'll say, yeah, he's just a little bit more comfortable taking these 50 EMA retests like we talk about in the D1 deep dive, even though there is no strong one minute divergence here. And it's funny because yeah. I have a couple of markups that do show that where you don't get one minute divergence, but you do get a 50 retest after the shift and it runs for you. So that 50 EMA retest yeah. is a great place to go in and take advantage of that shift. Now let's go sure. into the, the management of the trade. So Market sentiment moves yeah. up into the buy zone. Market sentiment holds the buy zone for this full run here up to 35 pips or so it looks like. And then it sure. ends up coming back down here on the one minute and pulling that market sentiment line into the sell zone right here. So where did you end up getting yeah. out? At the divergence line or did you get so this full 30 pip pop? I did not. So uh, that's, and that's again, one we've spoken about on the streams before. I need to get better at holding, you know, my winners, but because of the, the early loss this morning. So I was in at about like uh, point. 5.6% on my second position, right? My first position, I was in that point, um, point 0.5 and I lost point 0.3. So I managed that well. Second position, I could have managed better. Uh, the second entry, I could have managed better. I'm up on the day about 0.4%. Nice. I'll have to double check, but I think it's 0.4%. Um, so I did get about one, one and a bit R, obviously, to that div. But as soon as I saw that div, I closed most of my trade out and saw there was one minute div forming. I was like, okay, cool. You know, sometimes it does extend off here. And I also knew there was CAD news coming up and that's why obviously this thing got shoved up higher. I knew that there was CAD news coming out at 3.30 South African time. Uh, I think it's 8.30 your time. Um, so so I, I, I knew, okay, cool. I would rather, you know, take be up on the day 0.2 or 0.3%, whatever it is, um, and get that loss back and then be up a little bit on the day than rather think that this is going to be a home runner. But I know, I know I need to get better at holding. Bro, we all need to make... Like we uh, all have 10%. progress. Yeah. yeah, bro. We all have progress to be making yeah. in our trading. So don't sweat that. I think the one thing that I'm going to always push you more to do, because you probably got out of the trade yeah. right here at the at the high a day at the divergence line, right. right? Yeah, right around, Correct. Here, Correct. right around here. So I think the, the only thing to do better is say, okay, let me take some off here, but look at the structure. Because like, you're, bro, you know this yeah. shit. This is another flag right in here. As this comes up, this yep. is a flag right in here, you know? Yep. The and flag leads to another out. breakout. Yep. So as as that flag is forming, instead of worrying about that one minute price action, I was telling uh, Paul on our call, black shirt call yesterday, I was like, just look at the one minute L50. Because he was saying the one minute price action makes him close his trades fast like you. And I said, that's okay. Yep. But don't watch one minute price action as much as you're watching the one minute L50. The only place that I would have yep, started to sure. get out of this is right in here. When that yellow line dips, I would have taken Makes more sense. off right here. Now that's at the same spot yep. basically here, but in that's in this pop, if you you're following the more, rules, yeah. 
watch. If you look at this, right? Watch on the right side. This is at 2R right here, okay? So this is like 2R, you're closing some of the trade. If you're following the rules, when this gets up here to 3R, you're taking more off. So you yeah. actually get more of the trade off up here. And then you could get yep. full out right here as the market sentiment line dips back down. But you don't even have to do that because the 15 minute is still holding the eight EMA. Now with news coming yep. in, I definitely agree with getting out of the trade hundred percent or at least lock in the stop. But bro, you were so high yep. on your sure. entry. Your stop loss could yep. have been locked and the news okay. would have taken you up even and, higher. Yep. So maybe it is worth sure. to hold a little bit, you know, but I think overall yep. you did really I well. Think, and, yep. Good. What were you going to say? No, I think I think that's very true because as as our two well at least for me my two exit rules are one minute of fifty uh, moves into the opposite zone for these one minute entries that I'm taking or the fifty minute strong break of the twenty one and I didn't get either so I think for there for my second entry I was more I think I was too focused about that that loss early on and just trying to get positive green on the day because you know up point two percent point three percent is is a good green day no hundred percent. Are you making money? So 100%. Um, I think I was just trying to get that 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 initial loss back and then trying to, but I think there was no exits and I could have done a lot better on, on that bit. But I think I, I, I don't know who's who's watching at the moment, but I just want to uh, know in the in the comments if everyone understands how I'm taking these one minute entries, the guys with ASFX, because it's kind of like using the A1 and the D1 together, right? It's not, I'm not coming up with my own new system or my own th theories in the market. Not at all. It's literally just using that 15 minute shift and then looking for, Four one minute entries with the shift in our favor. It's that's and that's literally it. Well, it was very well explained. You you followed your rules really well. The last thing that I would say is maybe one more detachment from the how much did I make last trade. Yeah. Don't worry about that as much as just trading the trade in front of you like a good trade. What is this trade telling me to do? Sure. It's not telling me to get out yet. Let me take a little bit off if I want to cover that loss, but let me hold the rest of this and see if I can make some more. But I think you get it. <laughs> We're not going to beat the horse dead. I appreciate you coming on and explaining that to us. Let me uh, clip this right here so we can get in. That's, that'll have some nuggets in it for people for sure. Sure.